All right. Um, this is Deepam Dubey. Um, thank you all for joining my session today uh, and taking out the time. I'm Senior Product Manager at Domino Data Lab. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you all a lot about my journey with product management. Um, I also have an agenda uh, around how did I got into project management and, and how did I, uh, how, how can you become successful at it? So really looking forward to this session. I started PMing in 2013 and I'm really passionate about the ML and the AI space. So I'm really excited to talk to you all about that uh, in this session today. Okay, so a bit about where I work. Um, Domino Data Lab, we help um, enterprises scale and accelerate um, their uh, data science initiatives. Um, our platform is trusted by more than 20% of the Fortune 100 companies. Um, we are uh, precisely in the ML ops space and we offer, uh, we have offerings to help you scale your data science uh, and then help you build and deploy your models faster. Right? So uh, we are in the cutting edge business. The startup was founded in 2013. Uh, it's headquartered in the Bay Area. Um, you know, recently we raised uh, 100 million, which was pretty exciting news for the company. Uh, we also have funding by NVIDIA now and backed by NVIDIA. So, so really exciting stuff um, within the company. All right, with that, let's um, talk a bit about what are we going to be covering in this session, right? Um, I, I'm going to go give you an overview um, about how to get into product management and how to be successful. Uh, this is not a deep dive. Uh, this We're going to uh, holistically talk about a few of the various dimensions or, or a few of uh, uh, the various aspects of project management uh, and misconceptions and what people think about being a PM at a big company versus a startup. Do you really need to be a software engineer to be successful in product management? Um, and also last but not the least, a lot of people talk about, do I really need an MBA to be a product manager, right? So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go through my journey and give you uh, anecdotes uh, uh, and, and stories from my experiences which are gonna help you um, uh, make decisions as you embark on your, prog on your product management journey, um, help you build your own brand um, and hopefully take out any of the misconceptions you might have. All right, so with that, um, a bit of a timeline about my product management journey, right? Uh, and how did I uh, got where I am today? Um, I graduated from the University of Arizona uh, back in 2012. It was an exciting time. Um, started at, uh, as a program manager in Microsoft right after the my graduate program. Um, Microsoft is one of those companies which uh, show a lot of trust in, in, in grads um, and, and, and then make them and, and introduce them into project management and product management disciplines right out of the gate. Uh, and they sort of uh, allow you to take on challenges and, and work on cutting edge Azure services um for windows and office adoption and i was um i was lucky to be a part of a, a lot of those products um it's a great company um with a very strong enterprise presence the cloud growth has been unprecedented um when i got into the company um obviously i had to build out my own brand and expertise and i want to talk to you all about that hey if you want to be a product manager um, figure out what is that niche which you have, right? Like, do you want to be a design PM? Do you want to be a UX PM? Um, are you great at data? Are you great at security, right? And so find that niche of yours. Uh, even my first role at the company was not in the data space, right? Which I was very passionate about. I did my master's uh, in, in business in intelligence and data analytics, but that was not my first gig at the company, right? Um, but I, I really knew that that was my calling. So I made connections within my team uh, or, or other teams who were doing 
um, who were doing exciting stuff in the big data space, um, and then really sort of understood the space. You know, um, I also gained a lot of B two B skills and customer facing skills. Um, represented my products and international conferences, um, which were attended by thousands of employees. Um, gave me a, a lot of uh, confidence to go talk about my product and and then really make it successful. Um, that was a stint with Microsoft. I did for about eight years. You know, it was a long time. And um, recently, um, in two thousand twenty-one. I got a chance to join Dominator Lab, which was a complete um, 360 turn from such a huge in company to about a 250 uh, individual startup. Right? Uh, what got me to Dominator Lab was my passion about uh, data uh, and 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 to sort of uh, take it to a next level. Um, I'm really passionate about the data science space. Um, it, 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 it intrigues me to see how interesting problems can be solved with, with data modeling, with the power of machine learning and deep, um, and deep learning. Uh, our product at Domino Data Lab, it impacts various industries today. Uh, we are actually delivering vaccines, the COVID vaccines, um, um, by projecting demands through the models which the enterprises are, are building with our software. Uh, we are disrupting banking. Uh, we are also disrupting aeronautical industry um, and being used by a lot of uh, uh, top-notch customers. Um, it, it's a huge industry. AI software uh, market is projected to grow to 125 billion by 2025. It's a lot of size, impact, and potential. That was a bit about um, where I started and where I am. Now let's talk about the three dimensions, right? Like the first one being, do you need a software engineering background? Right. Um, in my opinion, it, it's really not like it, it's, it's optional. Um, great PMs don't necessarily have software engineering background. Personally work with um, very smart individuals from arts, literatures, and, and other backgrounds. And then each and every individual bring uh, a very different pers perspective about uh, how, how they understand um, their customers and how they represent them. So if you are uh, passionate about product management, your past discipline really doesn't matter. Uh, you really should try to demonstrate core skills of a PM. Um, and, and you can exhibit them or learn them uh, or, or show your managers or management that, that you want to go into that space um, as an engineer, designer, or a marketer. Right? It really doesn't matter. The three things, I mean, the three buzzwords, the, the why and the what and the how, that was, that's the thing which really matters for, for a PM, right? Um, for why... You got to understand the product sense, right? Learn more about the space, your customer. Um, if you are uh, in a B2C space, really immerse yourself in that experience. If you're working for a great app, download the app, feel the pain points, see how users are going to use it, how hard or easy is it to activate or to make payments, and then really go through that customer journey, right? If you are in a B2B space, which is um, also very different in nature, um, talk to your enterprises, talk to your ITs and organizations, sit with them, you know, and understand with them their day-to-day, -day, uh, understand their pain points um, and, and how can you help with them, right? So always um, find opportunity to go talk to your customers, um, tag along with sales and customer success um, as and when an opportunity arrives, those are great avenues to go. Um, avail if you really want to learn more about product management. And then also understand like what is the problem statement? What are your goals? Right? Like what what are you tr what are you trying to do uh, as a company? Like um, you're measuring, you, you want to get more adoption. Are you looking for improving metrics or customer satisfaction? Um, or are you trying to 
uh, define OKRs, or you're trying to impact your revenue, the, the top line and the bottom line, right? Um, understand what really matters to your company. Like it, it can be uh, one of the things which I just spoke, which I just talked about, right? Revenue, customer satisfaction, understand what the underlying goals are. That actually now brings you to understanding the what, right? Um, how do you define what to build, you know? Uh, and that always starts with understanding and defining and, and getting an alignment on your roadmap, right? Defining those long-term and short-term investments which you uh, will, will make for the product, you know? Uh, and and making the audience understand what sort of trade offs what sort of trade offs you have uh, made for that roadmap right a lot of times you might have to go um, do some user research right put yourself in the hat of the users to understand how your users are using your product you know um, and and build a deeper understanding of it um, it also would really help you define your user stories um and it will help you document them or or brainstorm right uh, a lot of times people come back and say hey how do you get new ideas like you don't have to get all of those ideas just just go out extend um like extend and look around within your company you will have great resources uh, where you can brainstorm or pick up new ideas right? a lot of times uh, as a pro product manager uh, it's not always about getting or generating a new idea. You will have tons of ideas within a company. As a product manager, you should also know how to say no, uh, which is also a very important part of uh, the job. Um, and then the first, third one is about how, right? Like you have a nice roadmap, you have features, you have user stories, but now it has to implement, right? Otherwise, it's not going to go ship. Um, and that's when you need to really define your scope. You need to rigorously prioritize uh, and do trade-offs, you know, um, have the technical chops to understand uh, the challenges uh, which your dev team might have. Um, they can range from privacy to security, um, to infosec, to compliance. Data privacy uh, is such a huge thing these days, right? So, uh, you have to be that problem solver or that problem manager as well. A lot of times, um, product managers are also called as problem managers, where you have to also manage some of the release blockers and understand what sort of trade-offs you might have to go make. Uh, also, when you're shipping something, it, it's, it's also important for you to know um, how would you measure it, right? That is a key thing. Um, and, and defining that success uh, in metrics is really important for you as a PM. Because uh, when, you, when you shift something, eventually you will have to know how is it performing in the market? Um, are you getting the right set of adoption or not? Are you getting the right customer uh, um, satisfaction? Are you getting negative reviews? Um, and that will really decide um, how will you make further enhancements or how can you better uh, improvise the product? All right. So now that brings us to the next section, which is about, hey, I've heard PMs at a big company or, or a startup are very different. You need very different skill set. The interviewing um, style can be very different. Uh, but let me tell you one thing, right? Like uh, most of the skills are pretty transferable. You know, uh, you might have to make a few adjustments uh, as I had to go make when I was working uh, within for a company which had more than 100K employees down to not down to now only 250 employees. Um, my, my CEO or my CMO is just um, a ping away. Right? And, I, and I would see them probably two to three times in a week in a product review council. Uh, or in my OKR reviews, so I, I would my I would recommend you to not think um, or get boxed with that thinking. Focus more on uh, building your brand, right? Which is which is important as as a PM. Um, 
try to get if you're working in a bigger company try to get into teams which uh, have external facing um, angle to it right or products which um, align with your core skill set and also would give you some experience about um, um, a product which is end user facing right product is also increasingly becoming uh, it's, it's increasingly becoming a, a very important function even at early stage startups right uh, you do need individuals to represent voice of customers um, startups are getting product focus focus if you go look at the job portal you will find multiple opportunities uh, where um, very early uh, stage startups are hiring pms um, with with skills which are pretty transferable, right? Um, interview processes are also very similar. There there is no rocket science to it. Um, at times, you may have a take home assignment, which is a great way for a startup to know uh, um, about your core fundamental PM skills um, and how would you fare at the company if you uh, if if you get hired, right? So these are some of the um, meta themes I have identified where I feel that these are all the skills which are transferable from a big company to a startup, right? Uh, I would spend some time on, on, on this to talk about my experiences or how I feel um, that you can get benefit from them uh, even if you work at a big company or a startup, right? Let's start with problem size and scale, right? Um, in a bigger company, your persona and your target audience might vary a lot because you are working on a suite of products. Like when I was at Microsoft, I was working at Office and then Windows and then Azure, right? So uh, my my target audience and my persona um, did differ as I was, as I was switching products. Um, whereas in startups, you have a very focused persona um, disrupting a new or an existing market with a very fresh take or, or a new business model, right? So um, you will find similarities, right? Like even in, in bigger companies, if you go into a brand new service um, or if you go into a brand new business, you would see that um, your challenges are going to be very similar. Um, now that is a good segue to product fit, um, where even if you're working for a bigger or a startup, you're always striving to ensure that whatever you're building meets the customer need. Uh, there has to be a constant demand. Otherwise, um, your startup will go out of business or in a bigger company, your product will, will be deprecated or it will be uh, defunded. So that product fit is a constant need, which need, needs to happen regardless. Also, I've, uh, my, with my experiences, I have seen um, for adoption curve, um, startups try to get more increased user adoption or, or revenue because they have limited cash flows, right? Um, and the product investments they make as a small company with a limited cash pool should really justify what, what metrics they are trying to impact. Um, and at the beginning, it's all about getting more users. It's, it's all about getting more revenue, right? There isn't a lot of a uh, cushion there. Um, even at bigger companies, you can find teams or organizations uh, which are very startup-y in nature. When I was at Microsoft, I, I took up or launched uh, products from scratch where I had to go seek funding. When I, see, when I say seek funding, I really don't... Uh, mean that I raise money. It was all about getting sponsorship for uh, getting devs who can uh, do investigations or do some sort of a prototype of the idea or the concept I was trying to build. Um, and this was really helpful for me to understand the whole facets of product management um, and then how would you go build something from from scratch, right? If you the way you would do for a startup, so. That sort of really um, helped me in, in my journey. All right, so let's talk a bit about experimentation as well, right? Like I, I do feel there's a lot of similarities between how do you experiment at a bigger company versus a smaller one. Um, I mean, you can fail fast, try again, but in, in both scenarios, you don't wanna fail forever, you know, bigger or, or a smaller um, setup. 
use data whenever possible, right? Um, remember that you might not have data, um, especially at startups when you're launching a brand new service or an MVP. Um, most of the best decisions, which I think I have made in my career, um, were at times a mix of gut and data. Uh, so be ready for for it when the time comes, and then back yourself. Um, PMs are are bound to fail. Um, there is never a PM who have had all of his releases um, to be perfect. Um, so be be ready that you will have challenges and, and, and impediments. The next one is, is my interesting, uh, is, is my favorite. So how do you sort of quickly scale up and scale down from 10 feet uh, to a 10K feet view, right? Um, you, every day, every, every hour can be very different for you as a PM, right? Uh, at times you might be writing a very detailed one pager or a two pager or a six pager to define a feature um, or, or write about an incident which happened for one of your customers, or uh, you might be doing some analysis about why your customers are, uh, are churning, or if you're losing deals, why is that happening? You're doing some funnel analysis, um, or at the next hour, you're probably working on a pitch deck for a customer call or a roadmap, right? So abstracting and presenting information um, and understanding your, your audience is, is a key to success, right? Um, at times, you, I've seen folks get too technical where the audience is, 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 uh, is a leadership. Um, so know your audience um, and, and cater your, your content um, and then switch context as and when needed. Um, and this is a skill you will need at, at a big company or a startup, no matter what. And um, the last but not the least uh, is measuring success, right? Um, you've got to measure every feature or product you launch. Um, you have to understand usage behaviors uh, or patterns because they help you make the right trade-offs. Um, and, and, and all of this data will also help you convince your internal and external um, stakeholders when you come up with newer set of investments or, or new ideas which you want to inc incorporate or or do for your um, product. So that was a bit about my experiences with big companies and startups uh, and the commonalities which I find um, in, in the product management space. The last uh, topic is about, and this is, I've heard about this from a lot of people or aspiring PMs is about, hey, do I really uh, need an MBA, right? Uh, a lot of, you will see a lot of job postings and um, they will say, hey, MBA is preferred or we would need to have somebody with MBA background and then things like that. Um, I really believe that it, it helps, like education does help, but do you really need an MBA for a product role? Um, not really. Um, and, and some of these jargons or terms that you're seeing in this slide, they, you would come across these in your product management journey uh, or in your day-to-day -day job. And they sound very MBA-ish, you know, uh, they're typically stereotyped as uh, MBAs or things which only MBAs can do well. But what I'm gonna go talk to you about, like how can you still achieve and then learn and gain these skills without an MBA degree and then how I did it in, in my experiences, right, um, of, of being a PM. Um, always uh, read success stories of other companies and startups, um, and then they will also help you um, get a better understanding of, of these topics. Let's start with market sizing, right? Um, a lot of times, looking at the data yourself um, helps you project the opportunity size, right? Um, when you try to pitch a feature, always have a projection. Uh, when you are telling a story, because it helps bring conviction. Um, and at times you can also consult with your analyst or data scientist within your organization to really validate your hypothesis, right? 
Um, so really looking at the data yourself, um, doing some projections and crunching numbers. Uh, if you know SQL um, or some like Python, that really would help you understand what is the opportunity size um, of the product or the feature you're launching, right? So, so enhance your data skills, right? That's what you need. Um, project charter, right? Product charter for me is more uh, like a movie script writing. <laughs> Think about um, what your what what's the core ethos of your particular product or category, right? How does it align with the overall offering um, of your of your product or the company, right? Um, think about the use cases. Think about the pain points. Think about what will you do when you come in as a leader, right? You are the CEO of this product or feature. Think about what will you do for it in the next one year to three years, right? And then define that strategy. Um, it's, it's just about, it, it sounds more, it sounds straightforward, but at times it's, it's a lot about um, really doing a storytelling uh, and then using your peers to sort of validate um, and then get, get feedback upon it. Um, and then that will really help you make solid product charters um, and demonstrate that you have um, in yourself to think about the product vision and take it ahead. Growth plan. This is also a buzzword, right? Um, how would you grow your product, right? How would you grow your, uh, how, how would you attain organic um, and inorganic growth? So what I really did in the past is I, I reached out to growth PMs. I reached out to marketing for innovative and, and net new ideas and, and really understood like how do they, how do they did growth, right? Um, were they offering trials to the customers, free trials to the customers and then converting them to paid customers? Um, what, or they were running some other campaigns which were really helping uh, grow uh, the product. So establishing those connections within with the growth PMs or the marketers or product marketing team within your organization uh, would really help you build these jobs. The next, is, next one is also pretty interesting, pricing models, right? Uh, people say, oh, you really need, do you need some finance or accounting background to really uh, have great pricing models? Well, the way I sort of look at it is, Look at your competitors, right? Um, today, most of the data is publicly available. Um, understanding their motivations and then understand their motivations and how they're pricing um, their product, right? You can also talk to your customers and, and get feedback from them on how do they feel about your pricing strategy, right? Um, always think broadly about, are you building a product for a niche audience? Does that justify the tag? Or are you only building for Fortune 500? Um, or are you also targeting small or mid-sized companies? Or you're just building for the masses, right? So when you really have those uh, um, targets in your mind, it, it will help you understand how these models are, are constructed um, and then what goes behind um, building a pricing strategy, right? Um, or a basic thing would be just think about how would you price something if you were, uh, if it was your own idea. If you were to go to a startup, um, uh, you will obviously do some analysis, look at folks around you and how they are um, pricing their offerings. How would you beat them, right? So, so start from there and then you will get some um, great cues about how these prod pricing models are done, right? Last but not the least is uh, go to market, right? It's like a movie. If you don't have a good climax, it, it's, it ain't gonna work, right? So tag team with product marketing, um, understand how the go to market is done, right? There are pre and post launch motions. There is um, online and offline campaigning, right? Um, a lot of times it's about blogging, it's about going to forums or maybe going to social media uh, to talk about your product or launch or do some sort of a pep talk, you know, and on why uh, did you build this and 
how are you envisioning your customers to to leverage this this offering all right with that uh that was the end of my session um if you want to have a chat with me and deep dive on any topics reach out to me on linkedin more than happy to connect uh with you all if you need some interviewing prep on how did i go uh, about prepping for a startup i'm more than happy to share uh my my experiences um my years and my names um and also if you're experiencing imposter syndrome you know and if you have self doubts um yeah reach out um and let's let's chat to know more about um how to get you into product management thank you so much